Wow. All right. So the second thing is, because you said you got to develop the belief and mm -hmm. you develop that belief by really what you put in, right? Mm -hmm. If you listen to somebody, if somebody listened to you or hung around you long enough and saw you making uh, $40,000 in a day, $50,000 mm -hmm. in a day, they would eventually believe you. I can make I can make 200. I yeah, 1000 at least. Right. Exactly. So develop that belief. And the second thing, how do you find the right vehicle? How do you analyze the right vehicle? You just like I said, you have to find somebody who resonates with you. You just have to find somebody. What do you want to do? Because I mean, a lot of people don't know what they want to do. Like I'd be on the phone calls with people. They don't know what they want to do. They just want to do something to make money. I want to make money. They want to get rich. They just want to get rich. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what you do. It's all about focus. That's it. So when you find something like you can sell real estate, you can do whatever. It doesn't matter. But you just have to focus on that task. But what I would tell somebody to do if they're starting out, it's advertising. Because you would never go hungry. If you know how to run an ad, you can literally start an ad tomorrow and make some money. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's not going anywhere. Once you have that skill instilled in you, you can mm -hmm. always make money. Wow. So when I tell upcoming entrepreneurs, if you're just starting, always start with advertising first because if you're selling a home, you can place ads on Facebook and sell that home to somebody who's on Facebook that live in your location. Right. If, you're, if you have, own a restaurant, you can play a, a giveaway on, your, on Facebook and say, hey, we're having a giveaway for our restaurant. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Once you acquire an advertising skill, you would never go broke. Other people are, are willing to learn that skill and other people are willing to pay for that skill. Other business owners mm -hmm. who, are, who are, don't know how to get customers. There's a lot of people out there that don't know how to get customers. Mm -hmm. And once you acquire that skill, you will never go hungry. I love it. We get on time? Uh, I think it's, it's 25 right now. All right, start over now. All right, so um, light, I, let's do some lightning coaching real quick, okay? Right. So I'm gonna give you a scenario and I want you to advise that person, All okay? Right. I am a 20, 30 year old barber, mm -hmm. right? I work in a barber shop mm -hmm. and I need to make more money. I make money from cutting hair. Mm -hmm. What type of advice would you give me? How much do you want to make a month? I want to make, I want to make $8,000 a month. Your goal is to make, how much are you pricing your services? My haircuts are $25. Um, with the extras might be 30, 35. So if, you, if that's all you know is, bar, bar, is cutting hair, all you have to do is just place, place an ad on Facebook. Say, hey, do you want to get a haircut? Target everybody in, in your location and get people to come in to book and get haircuts and just do that. But that, that sounds too easy. Come on, like, do, what, do I hit the little boost post? Like, what no, kind of No, of course, picture, there's more kind of technical stuff into that and you going behind the Facebook ads and actually targeting your geographic location. But that all goes into our training, right. which we're going to have the link down below. Gotcha, so gotcha. if anybody, like, want to learn how to actually do advertising, like, they want to know how to place an ad, which is very simple, but you just have to have the right information. Like I said, I paid other people to learn this stuff. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is click the link down below and we're gonna show you exactly how to do it. Me and you are gonna do a webinar and they can literally just watch it. We're doing a webinar. And they can just watch it. Gotcha. So, uh, but if you're just starting out and you don't know anything but being a barber, just keep with that because that's all you know. You know what I mean? Gotcha. That's all you know and you only, $8,000 a month is not nothing. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You can get a few more clients. Do the math. How many clients do you need if you're charging $30 a cut? Mm -hmm. How many clients is that? Um, Let's do the math. 100 would be 30. 100 clients at $30 would be 3,000. Uh huh. So let's do 8,000. Dang, that's a lot of haircuts. Exactly. Golly. That's why. The, the, exactly. <laughs> that's so to multiply that, you got to get like 280, 270. See, that's why I tell people that. Golly. That's why I tell upcoming entrepreneurs. You shouldn't like you should never price your services for 30 bucks. Mm. Like literally. Like I have an advertising program, right? I see a lot of students come through my program. I probably have over 500 students in my program. Mm -hmm. And what I tell them is that, always price your services over $1,000. Because if your goal is to make 10,000 a month, you only need to make 10 sales. Mm -hmm. But if you're pricing your services for $30, you know how many, like you said, you know how many haircuts you have to do? That's a bunch of haircuts. That's a lot of haircuts. Yeah. That's a lot of haircuts and you don't have to do that. There's easier way to make money than doing haircuts. Wow. All right, I got a t-shirt line, okay? I, I, got, I got this idea, uh -huh. okay? I got a t-shirt line. What do I do? Big. T-shirt line. I used to own a t-shirt line. Kill mm -hmm. it. We used to kill it with our t-shirt line. 
Facebook ads. That's it. Facebook ads is the answer to all the Facebook ails Facebook ads. <laughs> Don't you guys hear, uh, what's his name uh, from, uh, I used to work with, uh, what's his name, Jay-Z, what's his name, uh, Dame Dash. Mm -hmm. He's always talking about Facebook ads, but people don't really, like, the common, like, the common people don't know, like, Facebook ads actually is, like, an advertisement platform. You right. know what I mean? He, he literally run his business on Facebook ads, too. Mm -hmm. All these big people that you guys are looking at, and you see these big companies, they're using Facebook ads. Right. Fashion Nova, they're doing $2 million a week with Facebook ads and Instagram. That's it. Hold on, they're spending $2 million? No, they're making $2, they're making $2 million, million dollars a week. Golly. $2 million a week just with Facebook ads. What do you think they're spending? They're probably spending like 300 grand a month, a week, mm -hmm. 300 grand. Because they have a lot of influencers too. Mm -hmm. But Facebook ads is so effective, especially when you're starting out. It's so simple to do Facebook ads when you have the right information. Because mm -hmm. the platform is just it's a platform. You just have to learn how to navigate the platform first. Then after everything becomes easy. Wow, goodness gracious. All right, serious question, more personal. You went from, well, how, how long has it been since you've been like this super successful marketer? I've been online? Yeah. It's been about two years, two and, two and a half years, two years. So yeah. you started two, two and a half years yeah. ago. Yeah. Um, what are some of the biggest issues that you deal with, with like making the amount of money you make mm -hmm. so fast? What's the biggest issue? What are some of the biggest issues? Organization. A lot of people aren't mm -hmm. organized with their finance. So a lot of people make, like I, have a, like I have a student who joined my program like about two weeks ago. He's doing about, he's doing about three grand a day right now. He's profiting about 1,200 around there. So he don't know how to organize his finance. You know what I mean? That's where, that's where when you know how to engineer, you got to system everything. Mm -hmm. You have to system, like I system my whole life. Everything that I do is all systematic. So that's how your finance has to be. You have to engineer your finance so you can be able to take your profit margin out and keep skilling. But a lot of entrepreneurs who are just starting out who are rookies to P&Ls and they don't know how to do a P&L sheet, right. they- That's profit and loss, Trey. Yep, All they right. don't know how to do a P&L sheet. They can't really take their, they don't know where to take the profit. I don't know, hey, maybe this how, I'm gonna be a, this how much I'm gonna make next month. They don't know how much they're gonna make next month. They don't have a projective income. They don't know, you know what I mean? So that's the biggest hiccup with people because that was my biggest hiccup. But that's why I paid other mentors to learn how to do a P&L yeah. sheet. You know what I mean? What about, what about in terms of like personal? Like, did you have to deal with any, any arrogance? Like, did you feel yourself like, yo, come on, bro, I'm making $100,000. No. Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? Man? No, the thing about it is that I never was a cocky dude. Mm -hmm. I'm cocky in my, like, I love myself, you know what I mean? But I never was a cocky dude because I didn't have anything when I started. So I'm looking at it like anybody can do it. You get what I'm saying? So I can't be cocky to somebody else because I'm like, shit, I didn't have anything when I started. Why aren't you doing it? Right. You know what I mean? Right. So I don't, I, it's, it's hard for me to look at somebody and be like, Damn, bro, I'm, I'm the big dog because I wasn't the big dog a few years ago. Yeah. I was just a normal dude who was just online trying to find something to do. But and you've seen that, though, right? Like people start making a lot of money. And well, maybe I don't know how they were before, but you see they, they start to develop a certain um, arrogance or I don't know. You know, those obnoxious rich people. Have you have you encountered yeah. some of those? No, I don't really because I'm like the, when you when you when your income rises, like you don't really see stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like I, I hardly see people who are cocky and stuff. Oh, I see it all the time. In like, Atlanta, what? Because they don't have money. The people who are <laughs> cocky, the people who are cocky about money, they don't have money. Right. Like really, like they don't really, they don't have money. People who have money, they don't really care about being cocky. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The people who are cocky and trying to wear fancy watches, mm -hmm. necklace, those people don't have money. They're just trying to show off. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That, that's how those people are. And you don't want to be those people. Right. You want to be the person who have money and just look like a regular dude. Right. That's how you want to be. You don't want to be wearing these fancy jewelries and stuff like that because it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. My friend's doing, two, I have a friend, his name is Sam. He's doing $2 million a month. And he has, all he wears is a Air Force and shorts wow. and a white t-shirt. And you would not know he's doing $2 million a month. And you can look him up. He's, all, he's on my Instagram page. What's the name? Sam Ovens. Sam Ovens. Shouts out to Sam Ovens. Yeah, I learned a lot of skills from that guy. I learned a little, I learned a lot of skills from him. Did people around you change at all? The people around me? Yeah, friends, family, people that you know. Of course. So as as I started getting a lot of money, I disconnected from the people who was in my path 
because the people, you have to stay on the path, okay? That's why I like to tell people is that when you're, when you're learning information and stuff like that, you have to stay on that path. The people who you knew before, you have to let them go because those people, like people was asking me, hey, let's go out. Why are you in the crib all day? Let's go party. I'm like, dude, I'm not about to go party. I'm trying to learn this information. Wow. I'm trying to learn this stuff. And that's what holds people back if they're not willing to separate themselves from their, from their past. You have to stay on the path. You have to keep following the people, the people who's doing what you're doing because now you're going to acquire new friends. That's how I met Kenny. Mm -hmm. Kenny came to my, like, I would, you know, if I wouldn't have stayed on this path and keep on learning information to advance myself, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have met a guy like Kenny. You know what I mean? I wouldn't meet all the people that I know. Spec, all these other people, I wouldn't have met them if I wouldn't have stayed on that path. If mm -hmm. I wouldn't have let go of my old friends. You have to let go of your old friends because they're just going to hold you back unless they're trying to learn. Because a lot of people aren't trying to learn. Did you make that separation? Before you hit it big, like in the in the working stage where mm -hmm. they're trying to pull you away from the grind? It was or? in the working stage because when I first told people I was doing this stuff, they didn't believe it. Like first, when you first start with like e-commerce and stuff like that, like the first month I made like $10,000 and stuff. People didn't believe I made 10000 You know what I mean? People was like, dude, you didn't. That's not true. That's not real. Right. But the thing about it is that I couldn't show people because my deposits wasn't hidden. Like it's my deposit was spread apart. You know what I mean? My deposit was spread apart. So when it was coming in, I let, it was like chunk by chunk. Right. So I couldn't show people because I didn't have money in my account. So I couldn't be like, look at my account. I have $10,000. Right. You know what I mean? So they didn't really believe it. Mm -hmm. But now they believe it. Now they're like, damn, I should have I should have do that stuff with Boney when he was starting. Right, right. You know what I mean? So people aren't going to believe you when you first start. But which is fine. You just have to believe in yourself. Because once you believe in yourself, you can overcome all the circumstances, all the things that they're trying to instill in you. You can overcome that and keep on going what what's your ultimate goal my ultimate yeah, goal your ultimate goal as a person as a businessman as a family man, like what is your ultimate goal it's just to keep growing man because you don't know what you don't know mm -hmm. like i just started this stuff a few years ago i don't know what's out there mm -hmm. i'm pay i just paid this guy his name is den Pena. i paid den Pena. i'm going to his castle i paid this dude twenty three thousand dollars people some people don't even invest that. Some people don't even make that in a year. Right. You know what I mean? I just paid this dude twenty-three thousand dollars to go to his castle because he's about to teach me how to buy and sell businesses. Mm. So I'm about to learn how to buy and sell businesses. You nice, know what I mean? Nice. But that's that's how I, I just want to keep learning. Mm -hmm. I just want to keep learning and keep being around the people who are doing what I want to do mm. because it makes me happy. Like literally creating good products and helping people be successful, it just makes me so happy, man. Yeah. And people look at you, obviously you are super successful, but what are some things that you still struggle with or battle with? Because everybody, like people look at mm -hmm. you like, like you're just perfect and like you bleed gold. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody has issues, mm -hmm. right? So what are some things that you struggle with? I don't think, I don't know. What about Nothing. I, <laughs> this, the thing about it is because like I said, I've always developed in my mindset. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm always developing my mindset. So it's hard for me to like, like, there's no good or bad situation. Mm. There's only events, okay? Right. So, like, if I see something I don't like, I identify what I hate. Right. <laughs> so now right, I can right. focus on what I do like. So, like, it's hard for me to look at stuff in a negative way because I'm always thinking to myself, like, man, there's no good or bad situation. There's only right. events and circumstances that we go through to identify what we want and identify what we hate. Mm. So it's really, so I don't really look at stuff as good or bad. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I just look at stuff like, oh, this is just an event that's happening right now. I have a guy, right, mm -hmm. who lives in Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. I went to this guy's house. He has books everywhere, literally everywhere. He has a book. He basically sells books and stuff. Mm -hmm. This dude, I was like, dude, you have a good book collection. He's like, it's not a book collection. I read them all. I was like, man, this dude's reading books everywhere. Like, if we're traveling on the plane, everywhere we go, he's reading books. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is because he's developing his mind. This dude had, like, this dude was like, man, he lost 250 grand in one month. He was so blissfully happy. Right. He was so happy. I'm like, dude, right. you just lost 250 grand. You're this happy? Right. But it's because there's no good or bad situation. Mm -hmm. There's only events that we all go through to identify what we want. But how do people add value if, like, if you have everything, if you need everything? But you don't, you just, I can't have everything. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I need. You right. get what I'm saying? Right. You, only you can see what I, you know, only right, other right. people can see what you that need. Because I'm not, I'm in my, sh I'm in my bubble. Right. You know right. what I mean? You're not married yet, right? Yeah. Yeah, wait till you get married. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, this is what I'm struggling with, okay? 
uh, my, my, uh, my brother in my church, he said, pick your battles. I'd be like, man, I'll be picking all of them. Let me get that battle right there. I'm going to pick this one right here. Yeah. But um, that's I, obviously with, with relationship and business, you're going to have some things you got to figure out how to balance, right? Yeah. But how have you, like, what is it that, that separates you from other marketers who just can't get over the hump? Investing in yourself. I met so many marketers, dude, like so many marketers that I see, they used to crush it, but they don't invest in themselves. They think they know it all. Mm -hmm. I don't know why people think they know everything in the world. Right. Like they think they know every single thing. I see guys who, who drive Lamborghinis, right? Mm -hmm. And these guys are still making 30 grand a month, 20 mm -hmm. grand a month. They, I'm like, dude, why aren't you at this big, because I go to the biggest mastermind, right? And right. I know these guys can afford it. Right. I'm like, why aren't you here? Mm. Why aren't you here? Because I'm at the biggest, I'm at the most expensive, I'm trying to go to where the biggest, the person who's, whatever it costs for that knowledge that the people are at, that's where I want to be because that's where I'm going to get the gold. That's where I'm going to get everything that's mm -hmm. going on. Are you good at retaining information? Yes. I'm not that good at retaining information though. What type of advice would you give me? Because I'm the type of person, well, I read, but mm -hmm. I don't read at the pace that a lot of people read because mm -hmm. I'll read like a page. And then my mind starts wandering about halfway I'm through the page. I'm just like you. I'm and just, I got to read that page again. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm, I'm not that Listen to strong. audios. Mm -hmm. Listen to audios. You always want to listen to audios when you're driving and stuff like that, because that's the best time. Mm -hmm. Because when your mind is wandering and stuff like that, you have to listen to good books too. Like you can't just listen to any books. Right, like right. you, this is the books that I like to read. Okay, so you have to listen to a Law of Success and 16 Lessons. Mm -hmm. So you guys heard of thinking, you heard of thinking, Grow Rich? For sure. So Think and Grow Rich is the watered down version. So Andrew Cardigan, right? Mm -hmm. Andrew Cardigan was the richest man in the world. He was the guy who paid Napoleon Hill a 20 year commission to write the book, Law of Success in 16 Lessons. Mm -hmm. Then a few years later, uh, Henry Ford, they took that book off the market because that book had too many information in there about success. They took it off the market and they said, no, we're not gonna release this book. People can't have wow. this information. So they took that book off the market and then after, once that book came back on the market, that's why they call it Think and Grow Rich. Mm. So that's how the Think and Grow Rich, the, but the original manuscript is the Law of Success in 60 Lessons. They still sell that? They still sell that. You can get it wow. now. Now you can get it. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on I'm Amazon. It today. Yeah, you can get sure, that book right it away. Too. It's wow. a really good book. You want to read that book and you want to reach Rich Dad Poor Dad yeah. because that's a really good book too. And you want to read The Magic of Thinking Big. The Magic of Thinking Big so you can think bigger. The bigger you think, mm -hmm. the more smaller things look. Because when you start, like, a lot of people don't even sit at home and write what they want right. on the piece of paper. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right. Which is really crazy. Like, I do that every day. Right. Like, every day I go home and look at my dream book, and I write, okay, this is what I want today. This is what I want right, tomorrow. Right, right, you know what right. I mean? I'm always happy. I'm always writing what I want. Mm -hmm. And now, when I come back to reality, I feel like I can accomplish anything. Because I just said... I want to own Africa. You know what I mean? I just said I want to own Africa. What? That's so now, good. You know what I mean? So now when I come back to reality, anything I want to accomplish, it seems little. Mm. 